no one knew that he could all pretty well. And so it's surprising that he, he's doing that when he's taking upon himself to do that role. Seiko might be able to adapt. Some players can, some players can't. We'll have to see how that looks in Cloud9 here at this Major as Hellraisers start things off on this T side of Overpass. And Cloud9 playing pretty standard setup at the moment. Pretty safe from everything, not going for any crazy pushes. Well, I think you'd normally expect more people in towards the B bomb site. So I don't know if this is a particular read on Hellraisers. So we're creeping through the connector position for the time being, looking to burst on A perhaps. So if Cloud9 have a read of A, they've got three plays to try and defend with. So he's spotted the push and Golden will pick off one. That's the name of the game. Just slow them down, whittle down the numbers, and they can't even get to the bomb site with more than two players. Maybe more than one at this point. Issa looking to do the damage. He will get one. Issa has been fantastic and Woxic, but they won't be fantastic in this round. It will be all Cloud9, Steeko, and Golden. Two and three frags respectively, and that is the start you want on Cloud9's side of things. And I can't wait to see Skadoodle getting the AWP out, James. There's a lot of things I can't wait for in this game, mostly on the Hellraiser side, but of course we want to see a, uh, a Cloud9 which can be a competitor in this tournament. And in, in any tournament, really, because that's not what we've seen so far, and we, we want to see that. The brand deserves it, the players deserve it as well, what's left over and what has joined. Right then, Cloud9, they win the pistol. Stiko looking for some sound cues towards Connector. You can, um, as you go down into Connector as a CT, hear people going down the ladder. There is a crate at the bottom from the T side, so if you're going down into Connector as a T, you want to uh, run to the other side of the hole and then bounce off the crate. If you go down the ladder, you will concede your position immediately. I've seen too many times T-Sides win this round on overpass. It's a pretty scary one. They have four CZs though and only one Deagle. And the Deagle can be really awesome at just opening up with a pick because you'll have these really big ranges and a CZ is going to be more successful in sort of the mid, mid to close range, it's a sort of prolonged battles when you're on a bomb site. They may just get that here. They are closing the distance as a team. So looking for a good timing to burst on these players. And considering that there are a few helmets here, Seiko, if he's not able to hit the right players first, the ones without the helmet, it might get a bit awkward for him if they are to swarm him. But he seems fairly safe. He's got support, quite a lot of support. Skadoodle is behind him. In come Hellraisers. Good start here for Steeko. He's controlling the situation really well. Moving into the inside now. His back was covered while he was looking on the outside, and so far so good. Only Dead Fox remains. Stiko with five bullets. He spots the shadow, goes super wide. 25 bullets manages to get that kill as well. So the good times continue for Cloud9. Only two kills so far on the Hellraiser side, and of course they have no bomb plant in these two rounds, which means that this is a great opportunity for Cloud9 to get that extra money. I'm sure there are statistics to drill. Uh, in round two and three, when the CTs win the pistol per map, on how many uh, frags the T's get in those rounds if they don't plant the bomb, and the CTs go three zero, and how what kind of impact it has on their on the likelihood of them winning winning the rounds to come if they have a certain amount of money. The maths is way beyond me. But here we are, a Glock round from Hellraisers. They want to conceal the position of the bomb for the longest period of time, but again, I think really. The goal here has to be to get one frag, maybe two frags, because that is five to ten thousand dollars in damage to Cloud9. Yeah, Hellraisers will be trying to close that distance. They've been spotted though towards a long, so might be quite difficult now. Golden will catch them the choke point, and he gets three one v ones. That's really ideal, of course. Bomb down, Dead Fox, trying to play a little <laughs> blind spot, a sheer angle towards T spawn. Not going to pay off for him, and he'll be heard running. Stiko will have his seventh kill. Stiko making quite the bank with that MP9. It's really worked out well for him. And moving into the next round, are we going to see the AWP come out for Skadoodle now? I mean, he's got $7,000. It's going to be the AK buy for Hellraisers. Come on, Skadoodle, buy the AWP. Let's go. Is he going to do it, James? He's not doing it, James. Well, let's see. The money for the team, they, they can buy together in a future round. So they're playing for the team. Skadoodle with the purple gloves. I'm trying to buy some new gloves, but I've got, to I've got to sell two pairs first to get some pocket money. Well, let's see what Hellraisers can do. Five AKs to start off. They don't have all the grenades in the world, Hellraisers, so this may be a faster one than we might expect. Cloud9 looking to have a sh a take off the short B position. That will cost him two of their five players. Hellraisers have position now in that short B area. Cloud9 may be looking to close the distance. This is a round where they can afford 
to get aggressive. But they're trying to make the best use of those SMGs while they have them. And it seems they may soon disappear. So Rush will go down as well, just really trying to play very aggressively. It would seem that Hellraisers have read this situation really, really well. Cloud9, of course, you know, in, in saving these SMGs, they are encouraged to try and get early kills, encouraged to try to get close range engagements, and they look for both of those things. It has not, of course, turned out all that well for them. And Hellraisers do, are doing the very smart thing. You defend, you get the kills, and now you move as a team and just try to trade out. And Automatic, he's not even going to get a chance to get a shot off. Very quick kill from Issa. And, I mean, I said, as, you know, I want to see Skadoodle with the orb. And you said there's lots of things I want to see on the Hellraiser's side. And Issa has to be one of these highlights. Yesterday against um, FaZe, he, he was just phenomenal. Wait, nice not FaZe. shot from Golden. One versus three now. He's going for it. 46 HP. He doesn't have a kit. I don't know if there's one on the site. I would expect that there is. Lots of pre-fire while he's blind. Because he's expecting somebody to peek. So going for some burst there, but it won't work for him. Hellraiser's five of three players. And now one would expect to see the AWP come out. Indeed, um... It would be double actually, because of course Automatic likes to snipe on the sh on the short beat position. And yes, we'll soon see that it will be double A WP for Cloud9. So this is a big investment from the squad. Well, I'm invested in, in Issa. I want to see if he can keep pace with shocks, not just in that dust too, but in the entire tournaments. And that AK is indeed in hand. Double ops, of course, are. Definitely quite the task to deal with on this map. On a T side, it does seem like Hellraisers are really looking towards that B side of the map at the moment. And they are playing it very passively. We're not seeing any push towards sewers early in the rounds. And it seems as though they're allowing themselves to work this connector position first. Make sure that it's fully covered. No CTs are there. So even smoked off. So it would be difficult for CTs to rotate and flank them. This suggests a fast timing into the B bomb site. Whilst that smoke is still up. And there's some spots from Angel, and that's his teammates getting the call, know exactly where to look. Rush goes down, and now Golden's trying to hold off there by the water area. Massive numbers advantage for the T's on the site. Golden trying to defend, moving around the Molotovs, around the smoke, but there's one T5 barrels. This is Issa, and Golden hasn't seen him. Skadoodle still alive. Steeko now at the front, trying to keep the numbers even. The bomb not planted just yet. 50 seconds on the clock, and Woxic will pick off Steeko as he is uh, taking bullets from two different places. Smoke on the site, and now Woxit can plot the bomb behind the sandbags. Automatic creeping in, trying to jump and get a sneaky smoke. Uh, sneaky pick, sorry. He's exposed to everybody. I haven't seen him just yet, though. In the smoke now. But he took a random shot, which conceded his position, and Woxit with a 2k at the end of the round. 3k in total, and Hellraisers win their second consecutive round. And they may have broken the buy of Cloud9 in the short term. You can see even in this highlight, what's left, automatic with an orb, Skadoodle with an orb. Hellraisers, I'm not sure if you know they have much data on Cloud9, but it seems as though they were really tailoring that round to be an anti-AWP round. You know, you wait for a long period of time, you get the CTs exhausting in a utility, and then you just go for this B hit where the orbs are useless on the retake, and you stop them from doing any damage on the site just with your grenades. So that was a great choice from Hellraisers, again showing that uh, they have a huge amount of skill, but they really think about the game as well. Credit to Angel. Fearless leader. And... Ooh. He was Rob James. He deserved that third one. Two more pistols to find. Cloud9 will quickly be on the buy once again. We'll see if they can stabilize. Hellraiser's looking firmly in charge. No need to hunt necessarily in this round as... Uh, there isn't much to gain from it. Taking away three to seven hundred dollars from these players. Just need to make sure Angel's gun has not been collected. But that was an SMG anyway, so not the worst thing in the world. So indeed, Hellraiser, Hellraiser will make their save safe. Seaponic changing his position. Now, even though he got taken out by Stiko there, just an important thing. Like it, Hell, um, Bondic knows that there are two players left. He takes out one. Now, that player will communicate to his other if he is there. Okay, Bondic is in this, this particular position. So he strafes so he doesn't get pre-fired by the second player coming out should he come out. So it's just something to bear in mind at home if you take a frag like that. Don't just stand in the same position, but uh, make it harder for your opponents. And, you know, once uh, looking at how racers have sort of done the damage to Cloud9 in this way, and we can see that Cloud9, they're struggling to 
have you know much of an economy after this round should they lose it. Harrisers are in a spot where they, maybe they can mix things up. They could also go for the B play again, depending on how successful they feel that would be, playing a very slow round into B. Or they could try running a default towards A and just see what kinds of risks Cloud9 are willing to take, if any. And we will have a fairly passive start from Hellraisers, seeing, again, if there is to be any CT aggression. It's something you always have to think about when you're playing the T side of this map, because it's so, so strong and it's so varied that the CTs can get away with a lot. Although it can be risky, but we've seen how much damage it can do. It's a nice lineup to smoke off the entrance to the toilets. Often that is thrown from a much further back place, so as you saw, he lined it up over the bin. It's one for me to uh, practice myself. Hellraiser is now with complete control of the uh, connector's position. So one to watch for as well on an anti-eco, how to tease if they choose to move through connector, how they decide to approach it. Less than a minute left on the clock and Cloud9 are waiting. They've still got some Molotovs left, so if some smoke grenades start to fly in the right places, maybe they can slow the tease down. Dead Fox left close to short B. As you can see, Stiko hiding behind the smoke there. And uh, we saw in a previous round, I think the anti eco round number two, after that smoke went down, he was ready to deploy a molly and he still has one. You can, where he's standing, you can spray through that wall. He has elevated his position somewhat. Even with an AK, you can spray through that wall. So, um, got to be careful if you're a CT. And now, how will he deal with this situation? Here's a jumping, sees the gun, and that's a 2K for him. He picked up the bomb as well, but he can't get the third. Skadoodle now watching. Oh, he turns away just at the wrong moment. 10 seconds to go, though, here for Hellraisers to get this bomb planted. And it looks like Automatic will deal with Angel. It's looking very bad now, right now. Ito will try to push in with Dead Fox, but there is just simply no time. And they're going to try to get the hell out of Dodge. But did he die after time? I don't think he did. Let's see. No, I think, yeah, I think he was okay. I think it was oh, just no. before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, $1,400. So, yeah. Tough spot for Stiko, but uh, he has the right angle. Very brief shadow advantage there as well. But he played it well. But um, he's going to have to mix up how he chooses to play that position. But I do wonder because from a T point of view, right, you don't want to reveal too much about where you are at the moment and so on. But when they're, when they're jumping around anyway, I think that where he's standing should be sprayed more. And you almost wonder if he was expecting it to be sprayed or if it was a pre fire which is why he elevated his position. But again, you can spray that with an AK, obviously an AWP. And uh, I think it should be, there should be harassment there from T sides. It's cool to see just the difference in roles for Stiko as well, because, you know, playing that the toilet's position, you know, that's, you know, for example, rain on phase is very famous for that. In in mouse sports, you know, you're, we're thinking about Sunny. You know, the, these incredible riflers that ha you think of the player's name, you're just like, wow, this guy is so intelligent around smokes. He's so so consistent, getting multi kills. His control and mechanics around rifle uh, aim is so good. And uh, so it's really cool to see Zika doing well from that position so far. Many more tests to come, as we'll see him taking some damage there as he tosses a forward nade to slow down Hellraisers. Hellraiser is really starting very passively here. Again, it seems like that's their general pacing so far on this T side, is to be quite slow at the very beginning. We haven't seen those fast sewers takes really. Yeah, this is one thing that has been an issue for Hellraisers in some of their matches is that they don't always have an advantageous situation to capitalize on when the clock starts to run low. And then it's... Uh, Sometimes it turns into a big gamble. Very meticulously clearing areas out. Now they've got, uh, beyond that Molotov, they have mostly flashbangs. They've got enough for a smoke execute of some description, or a bait, if you will. And Cloud9 just have to wait. Skididol is on the 1AWP, so you're not going to have automatic holding his short B position. And Stiko's going for his old faithful around the outside of the bogs. How is now? 40 seconds left, making a play into the B-bomb site. Yeah, Rush is spread of these positions. Can't take down Dead Fox, so he is on one. Two from Dead Fox, really opening up the bomb site. Bondic will clear out Golden as well, and that's a very, very strong take. His entry frags came very easily for Hellraisers, and that is not the right timing for Cloud9. We can see their money. It really sucks losing rounds just after winning one is never going to be a fun time. Skadoodle and Stiko left alive, holding onto their weapons, can be a saving grace in the following round, but I think that 
Overpass is a map where you can work around that as the T side fairly effectively. Simply abusing the numbers game there, Hellraisers. Once they clear the site, it's pretty much the round. Stiko and Skudiddle have nothing more to do. So what are they going to do now? They're not in a position to buy. It's weird. You have an M4 and an AWP. Ideally, you want to hold on to that AWP for your next buy round with your team. But, um, I mean, do you put that... Oh, they're going to buy around it, actually. Alrighty then. I was going to say, in the, in, the, in the situations where you're basically ecoing with an AWP in tow, it's always a weird predicament, especially depending on the map. Some you can... You may feel more inclined to be more aggressive than others. Try and win the round, but have a certain balance in risk and uh, opportunity to save the sniper rifle. But here we are. They have um, got a, quite a reasonable buy, all things considered. Rush and Skadoodle with the two kits in this particular round. And now Seeker's playing inside Connector. So we see a change. Three people focusing on the B bomb site for the CT side. And that is a very good Molotov from the T's. They will hear Stiko and rotating out of connector is a very tough situation to be in, but Skadoodle manages to smoke off Isa before he can find Skadoodle on the, uh, sorry, Stiko on the retreat. So I don't know how he escapes all that situation. When a Molotov was in connector, they heard it clipping him as well, but here he is. Yeah, just boosting up. This may be a bit unexpected. I used to see this a lot a long time ago, but to see it off the back of a repositioning is indeed very unexpected. It will catch Angel off guard, and that's going to be him dead. So Hellraiser's with 50 seconds to go, and it's a four versus five. So at this point, they're just saying, screw it, let's just go in for this hard B hit, and there's a crossfire ready and waiting for them. Great flashbang, but it seems like the player playing anti-flash is going to do some damage, but still, entry frags will allow Hellraiser's to make some progress, but you can see it's quite awkward, and they're starting to fall back. Ah, uh, so Bondix holding in Monster while they rotate to take the short B position. Two of them are very, very tagged, though. So they get one more frag out of it, but it costs them another player. Skidoodle with the AWP and Golden with the M4. This could be an easy one if Golden can find the right engagement first. Bondic with 23 HP. It's got to be Woxic to cover while Bondic plants the bomb. 13 seconds, and they're not planting in the smoke, but behind it. Smoke's almost a bait in that respect, in case there was a spray. Nothing doing. Now you wonder where the advantage starts to swing, especially with Skadoodle taken out. Where is Golden? They don't quite know just yet. Not sure if he made any heads, uh, any footsteps, but I think he may have been spotted. They're trying to get a guarantee. Two versus one here, Hellraiser. T, the white feet to the play with health, but Woxic will be enough on his own for a 5-4 lead for Hellraisers. Very nice. That kill onto Skadoodle was an unexpected. You feel like Skadoodle could be the key for the retake there with the AWP, but dismantled by Bondic and... They had the crossfire here. You can see Automatic was playing anti-flash whilst his teammate was blinded. And he was expecting to get a lot more from that. Maybe if he had an M4 instead of an MP9, maybe there could have been a chance for more damage. But Hellraisers will be effectively shutting that force by around the save guns down. And there's two rounds now, one in the row for them. Their money has an opportunity to build here, only against some stock pistols and a Deagle and a P250. So we saw an example from Bondic as mentioned previously how you get into connector quickly without running down the ladder making a doof 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 sound and uh, he's using the pixel gap as well now I believe Bondic um, in previous days were saying that he's kind of been missing or he felt like he's been un unable to frag so far but got some really crucial frags in that round especially with low HP so it seems that today he is absolutely ready to play and he will need to be still some uh, very dangerous players on the likes of Cloud9 you see how he doesn't <laughs> advance in connector. Very smart stuff. If you're playing with Issa, Dead Fox, and Woxic, it probably is hard to get frags, James. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's actually one of those things where it might actually be kind of a, a, a good sign, unless he is one of those players that needs that sort of emotional momentum of getting those kills. But I don't think he is. No, he's always been dependable bondic. Now Cloud on on these pistols. His hair raids start to swarm the site. Smokes. We'll give him more cover for, for the um, bomb to get planted, but you've got to be careful because it does give the CTs more room to play around and be sneaky as well. But uh, that's a pretty brief one once they get to the A site, and here we are, Cloud9 back on the buy once again. It has been six rounds from seven for Hellraisers, so after the pistol, things are not looking very good here for Cloud9 on their CT half. Yeah, and this is a one of those rounds which you kind of hate. It's like, well... 
We kind of we have to buy. Don't really want to, but we have to. That said, I'm again surprised we'll see the helmet on Golden and Skadoodle, considering the lack of utility at the start of this round. If Hell Raisers were to play a slow round, which they've been doing often, this is a great round for it because Cloud9 don't have utility, and so the pressure can just burn every single grenade from the CTs. Ooh, that's a nice boost coming in from Automatic. Almost completely um, trashed, though, before he could get away from that boost position, but he will escape with 6 HP. But again, Hellraisers don't have to threat too much, have a massive utility advantage. So they put the pressure in the right places and start to burn that utility from the CTs and then run into an execute on the last moments of the round. That could be a great way to get an advantage, but we'll see how they decide to do it. So again, Stiko not playing the exact same way each round, which is always important as a CT team. Have to change your configuration. Issa with the AK though. It's going to be very dangerous, but Stiko is ready for it. Having a look, wondering if another player is there. The flashbang will force Bondic away, and he moves into a new position. Again, he is elevated, and he will have a, a, sh a short warning with the shadow. He sees Bondic going into the next position, maybe going to flank it, but Woxic is there. Woxic good for two, but a bomb has been spotted. That is so huge. Deco was looking quite good. Did so much for his team, but the 3v3. Good chance here for Hellraiser. 30 seconds to go, though, as battling continues. Automatic down to 6 HP, but he's able to steal a frag away as the trade comes in. The health is so low here for the remainder of Hellraiser's. Rush absolutely on for this one, as the bomb is still to be planted. Should be any second now. We'll see Woxic punching in the digits on the truck as Rush repositions. There's only so much in the way of angles he can play with. And he's being spotted out for, ooh, jumping off of the truck. That gives Rush a chance, and he's going to take it. One more player to go here, 16 HP for Dead Fox. Starting to like Rush's chances to pull this one out of the bag. As he pushes forwards, looking for the player. Headshot angle from Dead Fox, he'll make it happen. But it went down to the last man. Tough situation for Rush. He sees the grenade trajectory, he knows where the player roughly is, but he has to wait, because he doesn't know if he's going to get peaked. Might be peaked by looking to the left or the right. And after that, um, Dead Fox could be where he was, could be in the toilets and so on. So, pretty rough spot going wide to a number of different positions. Dead Fox manages to clutch at 16 HP. Not easy for him despite his position. 7 to 4 in favor of Hellraisers. And now we've got Cloud9 going down to a scout to see Zed's automatic. I can only assume as a knife by his teammate because he's got 70 HP now. Not a great start in this round. All too common, the, uh, the early knives. Fingers off the mouse. <laughs> yeah. So, another anti-eco round indeed, and Hell Racers have shown some good ones uh, so far on Overpass. I like the, uh, the previous one where they finished on the A-bomb sites, and you know, A-long can be a great choice. That's a reason why the scout here could be quite strong if Seeker's able to get a couple connections. Wow, what on earth was that? James, can you explain that? Nope, sorry. Can you please help me out here? Cannot compute. What in God's name was that? They need a lot of a lot more though. That doesn't make sense. It's all well and good to get a flashy kill. However, Stiko 17 for 7 at the moment. But I mean, it's it's not only good for one round basically beyond the pistol. If you ignore the pistol rounds in the uh, the consecutive, it's basically 7-1 to Hellraisers at this point. So that's that's a situation you one must consider when you look at the rest of the rounds. Well, Nick, how does he get both kills from that position? That is a god flashbang from his teammate. It's really, they're really tight places. Okay, we've seen that one before. Golden with the Deagle. Can he get his Tizian impression on? No. no. <laughs> Absol <laughs> absolutely denied. <laughs> we tried to build it up, Dan. It yeah. did not last very long. That, we're going to have to see that scout shot again. Here it is. It's got to be this. What the hell is this? What? What is that? <laughs> what is this? Did he even see anyone? I don't know what's happening here. Oh, he did. No, it still doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, it definitely doesn't. That is hilarious, though. But, well, it is ultimately inconsequential. Now, we move on to the next buy round of Cloud9. Skadoodle with the one AWP. The rest of them equipped reasonably enough. they got to win around here. They must. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely getting out of hand for Shores. How raises? Are they going to be going towards this A side of the map once more? Stiko, as you mentioned, he's been good at switching his positions up round to round, keeping himself unpredictable. 
And he's usually usually good for a kill, some information, to, and to delay the tease. He's been playing it well. It's a awkward position to play. That's why we really build up players who are good at doing it. And Seeker's got some sound cues here. He's also, at a certain time, he has to worry about his back, but he does have a teammate watching it in this instance, which is Skadoodle. So he's got that forward support, but that pathway to the A bomb side is open, and they'll see Steeko. Angel goes for the peak and challenge. No trade timing coming out there. Wow, as I say that, Woxic still finds the timing. He makes it happen. He, he pries open the toilet's area, and A is a problem now for Cloud9. Rush, he must survive, but he's going to get shot by the second player. Is that enough information? Oh, because he had his back turned, they won't see the bomb on the radar. He got shot in the back. They know a player is there. They don't know it is the guy with the bomb. Two smokes between Isa and Golden, but Golden has seen something, and now the bomb's on the radar. Skidoo flanking while Automatic comes in from the high ground. 27 seconds left. No more time for rotation. Bomb is lost at the front of the monster area as far as he's, he's concerned. And now it's Bondic versus two. He has to go for this. Maybe even win by elimination. Automatic by the pillar. Skadoodle coming on from short. Not facing just yet. You can see Automatic dancing around that pillar. They're waiting the timeout. Nine seconds. They're going to force him to plant. Or at least pull the bomb out. Five rounds now for Cloud9. Two players survive though. Which means that Hellraisers might have a better buy in this particular round. Which puts Hellraisers in a very good spot for a 10-5 half-time score. Yeah, I wonder if we'll see any adaptation towards that A side of the map. Because if you saw that Angel was clearing it sort of by himself, there was no trade timing there. And so in that sense, Cloud9 had the perfect setup between Steeko and Skadoodle playing back-to-back -back in that position. And there's definitely ways to uh, exploit those A setups. So I do wonder if Hellraisers will show us anything like that or if we'll just keep seeing some of these defaults from them. Again, does look quite default. Again, taking over connector, playing it slow towards the fountain and towards the playgrounds. Got you know, Lurk, Lurko and Dead Fox waiting outside the monster tunnel for any CD pushes. Very standard stuff here so far from Hellraisers. And a forward position there on Steeko. Instead of playing in bathrooms, he's actually playing deep on A long. I like that mix up. A flash from automatic. Golden. He's going to push. Dead Fox is blind. A pre fire is there. And Golden is dead. Now Rush is coming. He's made steps as well, but he will manage to trade the kill. Very difficult spot for Rush, but at least he managed to trade. Now the question for Hellraisers is, where are the rest of Cloud9? Angel moving to the front of the A site, and Skadoodle in the middle of the toilets now, falling back, but Angel might be able to cut him off. Steeko taken down in the meantime, so really don't know which way this one's going. Angel's going to be key. Sees Skadoodle jumping. That's a free kill for him, and now the bomb will rotate towards long. Really smart start from Hellraisers. I think once Skadoodle rattled off a shot there towards A, they realized that a path was free to the A-bomb site. But Rush, can he find a special timing here? A small window. Angel will turn away. Oh my god, he will. Absolutely perfect timing. Angel pulling out for the reload. Woxic will get that plant in front of the container, which allows Bonnick to fall back. Because he's slightly concerned about that flank. But soon enough, they'll realize both CTs are coming from CT spawn. This is a very hard site to retake with this plant. Rush and Automatic both have kits. Woxic, though, has a great angle, and he only needs one opportunity. Automatic now, how on earth can he do this? Basically, he needs to focus on the other. T oh, he almost takes him out. 5 HP onto Bondic. Again, you can spray through that panel, just imagine, but it's too late now. And Cloud9, well, Automatic has to hold on to whatever he can because they are about to be reset again as we move into the last round of the first half. I have to say, there's a lot of stuff that I like from Cloud9. Um, I think, you know, we can see that Hellraisers have become a pretty stable and very dangerous team. But I'm liking just the way that Cloud9 have been playing towards A. They've been mixing up their setups in ways which are passive, you know, a bit more passive or kind of aggressive, but still they have ways to play off of each other in within the setups, Skadul and Deco. And that's really important on Overpass. So I'm definitely liking some of the work that's gone into uh, Cloudline's game here. Again, Steeker the stand-in, golden new IGL added recently. It's a decent look despite that, but Hellraiser's definitely in control here. Big push from Cloud9. Oh, that would have been a nice frag. 
the uh, rifle support is here for the AWP in case they advance pos position and push. Angel's actually a great person to watch in terms of POVs. Just his game sense and the, the amount of time he's played the game for, you can see him just the way he moves around the map, not even shooting or taking engagements, but just what he's... You could, it's, it's very clear that he has a very good mental picture as to what might be going on in term, with regard to his opponent and what he will try and do if he was in their shoes. So he tries to uh, kind of stop those things from happening so it's always good to watch Angel's perspective in that respect. And Hellrise is looking good for 10 rounds in the first half. As we can see, it's a five versus two situation. Rush needs multiple frags in this position, but the B sign will slow him down. And that leaves Tico alone with Desert Eagle. Yep, not a good look. Hellrise is looking good for that 10 rounds score, but can Stiko at least get some more stats on the board? Any flashy kills? Up, but he can't pull the trigger in time. It's Woxic. And Woxic's having a game as well. 15 and 7. Always pretty reliable. And moving into the second half. It's definitely going to be a tough one for Cloud9 to reverse this scoreline. Hellraisers, they're just looking stable at the moment, James. Yes, it has been very comfortable. And like we've seen on many in Inferno, we've seen dominant CTU halves. So we can't count Cloud9 out just yet. I mean, obviously, it's Hellraisers who got 10 on their T side, so maybe Cloud9's T side will be their strength as well. Five rounds is, is enough to survive a pistol. Not that it would be ideal. You can see Valens with his uh, paper. They are. They seem to be prepared, well prepared, but um, that will only take you so far. It is time to execute on the server itself. So let's see what they have to offer us. The pistol first, obviously, that would be crucial for them. And let's not forget, with these five rounds, they did win the pistol in the first half as well. So it's a pretty solid scoreline for Hellraisers, all things considered. And we go back in. Brief pause before, once again, these two teams are at each other's throats for this victory here. The new Legends phase, or stage face at London Major, and Hellraiser oh, start off Ooh. in a flat way, it seems. Angel going for that aggression, shut down. Skadoo has some attitude here on this second half. Woxic is in a horrible position. He's going to go down by the bench as well. And this is a torrent of Cloud9 players moving rapidly to this A site now. Bomb spotted on long, so that might change the approach of Cloud9 or at least slow it down to keep Hellraiser's guess guessing and stretched out. There are two P250s here for Cloud9, Automatic and Skadoodle. I've picked up some P250. And I think Stiko's picked up a P2000. So that really takes away many of the CT advantages at this moment. Of course, it is a five on three as well. Issa's been shot in the face. Nobody likes to take one in the face. Gamble stack from Hellraiser's perhaps towards that B side. And I mean, at this point, maybe you do just save because <laughs> I mean, Issa just got instantly tagged in the face, and once that happens, he's he's, a, he's effectively useless in a pistol round against Glocks. So they're going to hold on to that kit, hold on to the Kevlars, the flashbang. I think that's pretty smart, and so also you don't give that extra $300 per kill that Cloud9, the Cloud9 players would receive. So, so I think one, one thing that was important from Cloud9's perspective in that round, even after they get two frags, still Hellraisers have position. They can stack a site if they want to, basically. So they realize, Cloud9 know that the player who died on long saw the bomb. So you always have to bear that in mind. One thing to look for, especially in the buy rounds here, in any match of Counter-Strike is that for the longest time, the T's will try to hide the position of the bomb because obviously that may reveal their intentions from the CT. So once they see the bomb in long, the question is, if they continue charging towards long, are the remaining three players going to stack the A bomb site? And a way, a, a way to deal with that is to show presence towards the B bomb site or to slow things down, as you sometimes see in the late game. So the CTs are forced to stretch between sites, so you are have an even greater numbers advantage wherever you choose to push. So, again, not showing the bomb is very important in Counter Strike, and that's something to keep an eye on in the buy rounds to come. So Cloud9 have now won both pistol rounds, which bodes well for the team, and I think they need it at this, at this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubts. And a round like this is far from safe as well against Hellraisers. Just the individual skill is always a factor with these pistols. And if Angel gets 
a deagle kill here. That could really make things a bit awkward. And he gets the tag here on Rush. Can't find the headshot, though. Roxic is the next man up, but no deagle for him. And he'll get taken out. And Salrius is with a very, very light investment. Would you say this is a textbook anti-eco, the long position for the T's? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's one of the safest options. Don't have to worry about flanks. You can trade your way to success very easily. You know what I found out today? What's that? If you buy a book in the UK, you don't pay tax. But if you buy an e-book on like a Kindle, you do pay tax. Who knew? Cloud9 charging onto the A site. Now there are two smokes, but of course they have a five versus three. And let's see what Hellraisers choose to do. They don't have position any longer. Now, they could just try to run back into the site, but it is somewhat suicidal. All the percentages are low. They can try to rotate and find exit frags elsewhere. But bearing in mind, they have $4,000 of equipment at the moment, mainly the, the Kevlar, the diffuse kit, the smoke grenade, and so on. And they can just save that for a, for an next round. So I think this is one of the two more common options in this situation save or try and go for some exit frags elsewhere. Maybe on a different map, they may feel they have stronger positions to abuse with the likes of the CZ, say in Inferno or something, but on overpass, not the case on this particular round. And Cloud9 are well spread out across the left half of the map, if you will. And here we go. The truck will be exploderized and Cloud9 are now three rounds behind their opponents. All right, one more. Round of pistols here for Hellraisers coming up. And perhaps more opportunities to get some damage in, to make things awkward for Cloud9. But, you know, Cloud9, in you know, the previous round, one of the beautiful things about it is that even if the, the T's, or rather, sorry, the CT's know that it's coming, in a way you're pushing all, you're all pushing along together, it doesn't matter too much because if you have the utility in the right places, how do they take jewels against you? You've got these rifles, you know, all the T's are in one position. So it's very easy to deal with. And we'll see that Hellraiser is well actually stacked towards the A side of the map. The other, one of the other very common anti ecos is just Rush B. And a lot of teams will just hit up a monster rush. Because again, you have this idea that all your backs are against the wall. You can all peek together. The utility can be maximized. And the pistol's positions are made very weak by that utility usage. And uh, sometimes it becomes that mind game between the team that is ecoing and the team that is playing the anti-eco. You know, what, which anti-eco round will they run? So where do we stack? Where do we gamble? And teams will try to mind game each other. And that's one of the beautiful things about Counter-Strike. When you have in-game leaders trying to mind game one another, it becomes a game of poker, James. Lots of saving to be done. Now, we spoke about um, the CTs winning the pistol and the T's not getting frags in the previous half, but this is a different situation where the T's are, are, have won the pistol and the CT's are not getting frags. And the problem with this is, um, look at how much money Cloud9 have. If they plant the bomb next round, but lose the next two rounds, they they may have buys for, say, three rounds in a row, which means that Hellraiser's, even, even if they win one round, like the next this round, they're at risk of being reset immediately. Um, and obviously there's a question mark as to how many players survive if they win this round and things like that. But because Cloud9 have so much money, the CT economy is of course more brittle and that is uh, very dangerous for Hellraisers. But the score could be a lot worse. Obviously they still have a two round lead, so at least they have that going in their favor. But they must win, they must win in the numbers and they must win consecutively to drain some of this cash. Uh, B rushes are pretty predictable from a T side that's in this position where they have the leftover SMGs, they have the leftover Galils. And it's partly because the utility will mitigate that disadvantage and it becomes very chaotic. So even though the, the CTs have better guns, maybe they even know what you're doing. If you can get those nades over and rush in with a good timing, it's still very dangerous. And so that's what they're going for. And it's going to start off pretty well. Rush gets the initial entry. Steeko follows up. Bonding, look at that. He can't do a single thing. He's stuck behind two great smokes. And there it is. That's the perfect way to play that kind of a round. Again, even if Hellraisers know that's coming, it's still difficult to stop. Unless you take away sewers, it's very difficult to stop. Yeah, and this definitely stems the bleeding to have three people trying to save at the very least. Bondic managing to escape the situation. Fighting to the death is of little value in his uh, situation there. It's a great angle from Woxic. Let's see how many uh, weapons they choose to invest. 
I wonder if there's a jumping flashbang they could throw from that position. Who is it? It's automatic. He has a flash, so he could probably throw... There we go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Allows him to get beyond the angle, but he's still <laughs> at a strong disadvantage, so... It will be three Hellraiser's players saving. And they can drop weapons, but they'll still be short on grenades unless we have weaker weapons come out. Yeah, I, I wonder if Hellraiser will t try to take away sewers in this round. I think there's always a danger that uh, Cloud9 in their position, knowing mm -hmm. that there were some guns saved, could run a similar round. And again, Suez is one of the most important positions to, to have if you are a team that's trying to rush that B-bomb site. Because if you're the CTs, you, you can, by taking that position away, you prevent the, the Ts from being able to plant as well uh, you know, into, into the plant spot. They'll have to worry about that angle towards short. And you'll prevent them being able to split and sort of surround any defense around that monster tunnel on the CT side of things. So it really weakens the T push if they just try to go all through monster instead. So could be a good option for Hellraisers, uh, who will be having three saved weapons. And they must surely, they'll surely force by around this. It seems they're keeping their money together. Interesting. That yeah, sense, I, I, th yeah, I think this, a different scoreline may change their decisions here, but um, again, they understand how brittle things are, so they are playing for the long the long term, I suppose. So we spoke about the smoke towards the toilets. I do believe that is the one we normally see. Indeed it is, versus the one we saw earlier thrown over the dustbin, which is the first time I've seen that one. So learn something new every day, unless you are an idiot. And it seems like Cloud9 will indeed think about going for the, the, the B hit again. You can see that this time they voided the Suez take early in the rounds. So maybe they were suspicious of how he's pushing it. And they're going to try to contact in. That's actually quite smart. Even though there's a, a bit of team damage there, they are still going to punch a hole into this B bomb site. But maybe not. Issa's close to the CZ, doing more damage. Health by Bondic, who is now going to be in a lot of trouble. He's staying alive, doing damage. Two versus two. This is going really well for Hellraisers. Awkward for automatic, exposed to two players running out of bullets. There's plenty of time for the bomb to get planted here. They know where the CTs are and they may just frag out. That makes life a lot easier, but Woxic is always dangerous. Trying to get out of the angle. Where does he choose to go? Obviously up those stairs, he could watch across to the site to try and get the bomb planted. Although, could go towards the sandbags as well. 1v1 now. Bomb has been planted. Steko versus Woxic. Where is Steko? Oh, we spotted him. Oh, what? <laughs> what does that, was he just like, was that in the was middle that through of the, the edge? Or was that through the wall? What is going on? I don't understand. Steko. I cannot compute. I, it has to be through the edge of the pillow. You can see the pressure. You see him there looking to the skies, praying to Gaben. Okay, okay. maybe we'll get to see it. Yeah. Oh, alrighty then. Is, is it like really thin there? Yeah, he's yeah it is. In between the, the kind of, I don't know, the gap. Nice. The gap. Thin walls like student housing. That is awesome. Very nice, Stiko. That was a really sick shot. That was fantastic. And there's also something that's interesting because if a CT is playing on the angle where he's playing for cover and not wide peeking, you can you can line that's, there's a lineup to be had there. So that's pretty awesome. I don't know if it was, but in a high pressure situation as well. That is really We're gonna cool. be seeing that one in the in the face at Pugs. Right, ten ten, all tied up here, and Cloud 9s economy is looking lovely, and Hellraisers can't say the same. And one of the sad things so far for Hellraisers is that they haven't really had any play towards the A side of the map, and that's where you know Woxit can really get things going for his team. He's ha having to go for the retakes consistently towards that B bomb site, and maybe for Cloud 9 we'll finally see a mix up. Looks like that could be the case. Two players going towards the playground, but this does seem as though it is a default spread for Cloud9 so far. And both teams playing very passive in this round. Automatic watching for any pushes in through Monster, which can happen if the CDs take sewers. They can flash over. Speaking of which, there comes the take in from Cloud9. That is a very good way to start the round. Bondic manages to escape, sorry, Woxic with most of his health. And the CTs are forced back on the A site now. Skididdle takes an angle. But if he was to get peaked, who would be closer? It would be Woxic and Skididdle takes him out as well. Three plays remain for Hellraisers as Cloud9 look to take the lead. Bomb collected by Golden. Dead Fox remaining on B, looking through Monster. Issa appears to be rotating towards the A site. We've got Russian Stiko behind the smoke, close along. Bondic will be looking for them. 
but he has to limit his exposure as well. Peek every now and then. The train passes on B while Issa looks towards A. Grenade 2 streaming in. Counter grenades as well. And it's a 4 on 2 here on the A site. Issa ready to try to anchor, but he is caught dropping off the truck. That is not how you want to take an engagement. And Dead Fox left alone in the 1v3, but he can't do anything from where he is. So that is another round in the bag for Cloud9. And Cloud9 are playing really well so far. This is awesome to see. Stiko has 26 kills. He's 26 for 12. We raised loads of question marks about position, not the player, but more position. Um, this is a new Cloud9, but he is delivering at the moment. Doing the heavy lifting as Cloud9 moved to the uh, lead, finally. Again, they won both pistol rounds, and they've won every round so far in this half. There were only five rounds, of course, that we have seen won by any CT team in this game. So it seems that the T side will be dominant. But will it continue that way? It may do in the short term. Hellraisers could buy, but they will be light on utility. And it is, as you said as well, you know, of course, Hellraisers losing both pistol rounds definitely does make things more difficult. But again, you know, the whole thing with Steco is, is that people, um, you know, they, they sort of very much create an identity for a player based on the role that they may, may be playing and they look at just the numbers that come out of that role. If you're always the guy that's on B rotating into A retakes versus the guy that plays aggressively and opens up one for one every round for a team, that's an enormous difference. You know, that's not nearly as hard to, you know, to accomplish frags in the, in the latter there as it is the former where you're rotating yeah, in. Yeah, essentially you get pigeonholed. Absolutely, yeah, and 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 you know there are some players that that are very good at one role and maybe they can't adapt, but there are players that can adapt and play a, a variety of different roles and even weapons. Again, you know MSL case in point there. So you got to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And thirty days here for Cloud Nine and for Seco on Cloud Nine, but this is certainly a good way to raise his stock moving forwards. So how raises starts to struggle here on the CT side, but when will they stabilize? And will they stabilize? That's uh, definitely a question we are looking to see if it can be answered or not here by Hellraisers. This is not the round necessary to answer it, but that Fox the only guy with a gun. I was wondering uh, how that situation would continue for Cloud9 if they would have players coming in the top of Connector. I want to say it was Bondic who was on the T side in Golden situation. He had no engagements and eventually just left the way he came in. But uh, other teams, you'll see them clear out Connector in a round such as this from the top and the back at the same time to limit the uh, what the CTs can do. So there was a gun in there. I don't know if they've removed it to stop the CTs from picking it up and dispose of it elsewhere. Let's see, what does Skadoodle have in mind? Watch out for that train. There we go, running jump throw. Maybe for the balcony, perhaps. Angel close with the CZ, one kill for him. Completely blind as he clears out his bullets. And Issa moves in, drawing again with the Deagle, and he gets two! Oh boy, this changes very quickly indeed. Skadoodle tagged now, and he's in trouble. He's got picked up an AK though, what can he do with it? Elevating his position, but where on earth is Bondic? Moment to calm down. For Skadoodle as he tries to figure out where is he, but he can't bait for too much time. He's got 15 seconds left, he has to hold it. And Bondic has found the position, and Skadoodle, he has no idea where he's being shot from. My god, the Deagle collateral. You never see that, and that is one way to get back in a match. Talk about lining up on different levels as well, taking one in the face, and that is... Um, I mean, there's nothing you can really do about that. It's just, just one of those things, but... When you're at a major, it's one of those things you could do without. Look at this. Oh my god. Oh. Deagle collateral. You very rarely see it, and it couldn't be at a more Was opportune it? time. I think he killed him with two separate shots. I think he shot the guy in the head through his teammate first and killed him, and then um. followed up with another meat shot on the guy at the front. <laughs> Fair enough, if, if that is the case. Either way, result is the same. It's around for Hellraisers. It's a lifeline for Hellraisers, but they're not out of the woods yet. Their money sucks, and Woxix's timing is simply not good enough versus Skadoodle. And they are starting this round off, James, with the, on the wrong foot. Yeah, those are risks that um, maybe they cannot afford in this situation. Look how aggressive that smoke is. The T's have to be careful about that one, because who knows? We saw Cloud9 try to burst through a smoke which wasn't as deep as this. 
Um, I think it was Rush in the first half, regardless of who it was. This what will slow down Cloud9 because you can see Automatic was playing anti-flash. He was staring at the corner just in case they were trying to get something out of this. And it does waste some time for Cloud9. They're walking with no grenades, but three kills. Issa, this time he gets another penetration kill. How do you do that two rounds in a row? That is just the worst luck for Cloud9. And you start to focus on their money at this point. What do you do? A minute on the clock, two versus four. Golden and Skadoodle. Trying to trade with, a with the AWP in tow will not be the easiest task. Golden is a fragger. We saw it on his previous team as well, but this may be too much to ask. Yeah, it's really hard to get in. They did have time, but time is slowly but surely diminishing. And just a very strong angle from Dead Fox there. Very advantageous. Skadoodle can trade out, but there's three more where that came from. And he's got 25 seconds now, and will anyone else try to peek him? Do they dare? Do they dare to peek Skadoodle here? They don't have to. They have a player on the A sites. They've got two on the B-bomb side, and time is running out. And one thing that Hellraisers can't really afford is to lose more money. That said, I think Skadoodle has some running there, as it looks like Dead Fox was trying to discover where he's gone, but... You know, it's better than to continue to push. Yeah. He'll upgrade for an AK, though. At this point, the Hellraiser's economy has to be a bigger priority for Hellraiser's than taking this AWP away. The rest of Cloud9 can buy in this round as well, and that is a consecutive round for Hellraiser's. Isa with another penetration kill. And that's going to be just a great mental boost for him. Again, playing his first major. Going to be feeling the pressure two rounds in a row. He just, he just get, does like colossal impact to Cloud9 on the B bomb site. Is uh, pretty damn awesome. And that's Hellraiser's back in the lead. This is a big round now for both sides because one team's going to be broke. Got more aggression in that connector position. Just Golden there. They automatic in the meantime has taken control of short B very early on indeed. Hellraiser's have three players in the B bomb site. And Woktik once again is on long. Slow one here for both sides. As the default starts to play out for Cloud9, they start to gain some ground towards the toilet's position. And Hellraiser and slowly but surely fall back. And it's kind of the threat of the aggression, which is really important as a CTs, so that you force the T's to have to check every corner to use all the pop flashes and just make sure that utility is used as much as possible before they get to a bomb site, just so that their site attack is a bit weaker. You can find some opportunities here. Maybe Oxy can find something. It does seem like Cloud9 have their eyes set on this A site, but they don't have any picks yet. And although most smokes, most of the smokes are gone here, Hellraisers have a strong setup. There are some flashes here, and they'll surely need them. There they go. Over the top, perhaps, with the smokes. No flashes just yet. There it is. Will Woxic be able to get anything here? Angel completely blind, but Bondic is on the case. Not very many places he can go, though. Fighting for the time. 23 seconds, and Wokitik has a cross to the site. In the meantime, he's just buying time for the CTs to rotate. Very dangerous play. It must be respected, but Automatic with an aid in his hand. Stiko to trade. Another kill for Stiko. Trying to do more, but Issa will take him out, leaving Skadoodle on one versus two with 10 seconds on the clock to plant the bomb. He's got to commit to this. He'll hear the footsteps of Issa. Tries to stop him. He's got the slightest angle. Another penetration kill for Issa. Very crucial round for Hellraisers. AWP is there to be collected as well. I think there was like three penetration kills that round. <laughs> Pretty interesting stuff. Hellraisers grinding it out. And it's one thing, one important quality if you want to be a top team is, is being in a position where you lose both pistol rounds, where things don't go your way. But you still find a way to have that quality and that consistency of temperament to just have that faith, just grind out the rounds, no matter how hard they are, you don't lose faith. And we see that from Hellraisers in this match, and that's that's a good sign from a team that, you know, we're not sure exactly what they're made of just yet. We've seen some great signs, but this major is where they could either do a huge amount of damage and live up to that potential, or they could show us that there's still a lot more work to be done to round out their game. But to me, this is a great sign from Hellraisers. And Cloud9, Got to give it uh, to them as well. They've been playing really well in this overpass. Especially Stiko, who almost has double the kills of his nearest teammate. Stiko 28, Golden on 15. Golden pretty close to the site now. Automatic keeping an eye on things outside B. He's just lurking passively while they focus on the A site. It's going to do a far back with the bomb. Having a look towards A as well. 
who automatic. I feel like he was just seen by Isa, but he didn't see anything himself because he turned away. So he may realize he's a lurker just based on his position. Golden picking off Angel, probably wondering what's going on in A in the meantime, and Golden continues to frag. Bondic taken out now, and in nowhere Woxic is towards the bank, but you have a look and you're dead. That's how it goes against Woxic. Skidoodle hasn't been seen with the bomb just yet. He's at the front of A, and oh, how did he get away with that Woxic? Stiko trying to pre-fire now, but what does Skidoodle do? He's, he's not moving at the moment. Woxic missing the shot. Stiko crosses through the smoke. 30 seconds, and... Skidoodle's just been holding an angle this entire time. Now Automatic's at the front, but how will they deal with Isa? Walking into the man, Isa, such a good anchor on these bomb sites. Has the AK with all of it pretty much. That is very surprising. 20 seconds to go, and it should be a pro uh, plant now here for Cloud9 as Woxic keeps the pressure up, but there's not too much he can do from this position. He's got to be careful. Has to actually reload his AWP. That's a long reload, too. Dead Fox now, the one that is the front man with that M4, seeing if he can somehow work his way into position, create some space for Woxic to do some damage with the AWP as well. This is very difficult, automatic with a great peak, and Woxic is toast. And that's an important round win for Cloud9. Our Razors were starting to pick up some steam, but now they are in a lot of trouble. Their money did not get far enough. I really wonder if um, automatic being spotted I think I had an impact actually, but Golden, great impact in entry frag, sorry, on the um, A bomb site and then automatic the lurker towards B to close out the round for his team. And that is Cloud9 one round behind. We have a tactical timeout from Hellraisers, their last of this game, as the money is all over the shop. East has got 6k, well, you can see the money in front of you. So uh, things getting pretty hairy now. Yes. And it's, it's interesting, if we just take the Hellraiser's point of view for a second, they, I think in their previous game, there was no real deserving loser. I think both teams deserve to win. The G2 Hellraiser's game. Yeah, yeah, and they move into this one where, especially with their money in this situation, they could possibly go 0-2, which would be, well, I mean, let's be honest, I think a lot of teams are in a horrific position at <laughs> this major right yeah, now, yeah. which are unexpected, but... I mean, let's see how they play out. They're going to go for the force buy here. The Famases, the CZs. I mean, they may have calculated how many buys do we get if we eco versus if we force here, etc. and so on. So they're going for it. Boxic on the AWP. He's still toward that long position. But will they get aggressive somewhere to make up for their shortcomings? I'm liking the fast long t uh, fast sewers take from Cloud9. Rush into position very, very quickly. And this does suggest... The push into B, of course, and we start to see the split. Automatic going contact straight out there. And these CTs are very far away. No close range setup. They don't have anything but sticks and stones to throw at this T push. Stiko and Rush opening things up on the entry. Dead Fox around the side. I don't know that he can get at the gun, though. Oh, that was a close one. Golden stays alive, though. Woxic and Angel in a horrible position. Couldn't see Skadoodle over the smoke. And uh, yeah, that's the advantage of being closer to the smoke. On so, well, depending on the situation. Anyway, Angel will try to pick up the AWP maybe. Now, this is interesting because considering the force buy, I thought maybe they would try and get Woxic into a more aggressive position, but it seemed somewhat traditional what they were doing, except they were just far worse equipped. Um, he's been playing long pretty much every round on this CT half, uh, Woxic with AWP, so I thought maybe put him in a battle situation to try and, with, with some support, to try and make up for the issues they have. And Angel won't be able to save the AWP. I think he was waiting for the T's to rotate out so he could safely get it because he was exposed on the balcony. But no, they'll take nothing from that round, Hellraisers. And now it is eco town for them. We haven't had an overtime to, uh, today, James. Just saying. Because this game could deliver something like that because Hellraisers will get $2,400. In addition to what they have now from this round, and that will make things very tight when they can buy, because it'll be 14-13 effectively, unless something goes really wrong here for Cloud9. And if Cloud9 win that, then we'll see a force buy from Hellraisers. So there's an okay opportunity with no warp, and a terrible opportunity with a force buy for Hellraisers to prevent Cloud9 from winning this game. This is a very bad position for Hellraisers. They've entered the territory of zero margin for error on their next buy round, really. Cloud9 are very close. Can they close it down? 
like you said, James, it'd be so crazy to see Hellraiser is going 0 and 2. No one's expecting Cloud9 to win this one, and that's a beautiful spray. Let's finish it off straight away, and now we get into the good stuff. This is very important. Going down to the wire. And there is no orb money. There is no orb to be had. Yeah, I mean, he's been playing towards long anyway. So I don't know how much of an impact it will have on this round necessarily, but obviously you want Woxic on the sniper rifle. But um, I was going to say to some degree he's going to avoid it, but he's got 21 kills. So For those of you watching on Twitch, there is the premium pass available, which is 9.99. You have an interactive HUD along with the different POVs of the players and exclusive VODs during the Major and other things like that. So if you're interested to have a look, you can find out more info at faceitmajor.com forward slash premium hyphen pass. Yes, for some reason, somebody put hyphen in there. Um, so make sure you have that in there, <laughs> <laughs> faceitmajor.com forward slash premium hyphen pass. If you don't know yes. what a hyphen is, it's a dash. Yes, you're not mistaken. There is indeed a hyphen in there. It's hard to believe. Okay, we had a pause. And it all really does come down to this. Is Hellraiser's best chance to stop the worst from happening, to stop that 0-2. But for Cloud9, my god, what a result it would be. And an unexpected one across the board, absolutely. Making the best of a difficult situation, reinventing themselves. And they will move towards the sewer's position. They found a lot of success towards B. Opening it up on a variety of occasions and it being difficult for Hellraisers to really do much. We saw Issa and Dead Fox have a good combo, but if they get wrapped from short, that's a problem. In the T's come. Hellraisers holding so far. Issa and Bondic. Dead Fox looking for support if he needs to support his teammates, but they don't need no support. Five kills for Hellraisers. A clean run from them. That is exactly what they needed. And now things get very even more interesting. Both teams will be on a full buy. Woxic has an AWP once again. And uh, Issa's picked up an AK-47 as well as Bondic. And they have been very key fraggers for the Hellraisers side. So this is really going down to the wire. You do wonder as well, if, I mean, Cloud9 going for just a straight B-Rush with no default, no anything really, it's quite gambly when you're in a spot around where you do have an advantage. It's definitely a very gambly way to play. Maybe they were, they were thinking that Hellraisers would not expect it. Either way, as you say, this is this is scary now for, for both teams. I guess it was always scary for both teams. But Cloud9... Again, coming from an advantage, could feel as though this could be slipping away now. Going for that B rush, didn't work out. Do you go back to a regular default? No, they so that they're making some noise towards A, making it sound like a slow default, but it's going to be another burst onto the B bomb site. Dead Fox and Issa playing the same setup, but will they have the same success? Grenades being lined up to deploy onto the site. But that's a very aggressive smoke grenade from Hellraisers. And that, that's a big problem for Cloud9, of course, because the, Hel the CTs will be at a very strong advantage as the Ts try to push through that smoke. So they have to wait it out. This is going to be a five on two, maybe three. Bondic is in for a fast rotation. There's a smoke on the balcony as the T starts to push in. He's trying to avoid the flashbangs. Still gets a kill out of it, but the bomb has slid down the ramp and Dead Fox gets the multi-frags in. Three versus two in favor of the CTs. And the T's may want to try and plant this bomb while the smoke's rough. And they don't know what's in the water. Molotov's being deployed there. Angel coming in for the short position and Cloud9 are in all kinds of trouble. Stiko getting traded now. It's going to with 10 HP, one versus two. The wall bang is in and Hellraisers make it to match point. James, I don't know. I'd, I'd be so interested to know like why Cloud9 going for these B hits again and again. And I don't know if it's because they smell a weakness or because they think that it's more reliable than that taking control of the A side of the map. When you have to worry about Woxic with an AWP, I can understand, but we can see that Hellraisers, they're starting to adapt and be more ready for the kinds of B takes that are coming in from Cloud9. We've seen multiple successes for Hellraisers there, and now Cloud9 are the ones with an awful buy. After being in a better position for quite some time, Hellraisers are finally in a spot where they could just close this down. But over time, it's been <laughs> a repeated situation here at this, at every stage of this major, so maybe Cloud9 can bring it about once again. 
Yeah, CT rounds have been few and far between. I think Cloud9 were purely just trying to play the numbers game towards that B bomb site, but it didn't quite work out. Very strong fraggers, pretty much across the board for our razors. So it's a problem wherever you choose to go. Now I've got Bondic rotating from B to A, I believe. Woxic and Angel in a long position, so they can wrap on these players, but Bondic will need to buy time as this goes on. And it seems it will just be another numbers game situation. The bomb at the rear for the time being, and here they come charging in. Haven't seen Bonnie just yet, I don't believe. He gets no frag though, that's a problem. That's a gun to be collected by Cloud9 as well. They picked the perfect way to get onto the A-bomb site. Ha like the, the long players are isolated today, they have to go for a choke point, they can't do that. It might be an instant save if, well, I mean, there's no save, it's the last round. This looks so good right now for Cloud9 to secure the overtime. Issa will be creeping in from the CT side of the map, looking to go through bank as Dead Fox pressures from the stairs. And Issa, oh, he goes down, that's a big frag from Golden. Dead Fox uses that opportunity to get out there though. Maybe he can still save this. Nay comes out, still alive, and that's the moment to push forward. Somehow finds a headshot. Woxic doing damage as well. Automatic in for the clutch, the 1v2, through the smoke, they line up, Automatic secures the overtime. Oh my god. They picked the perfect route onto the A site, James. There was no, that was the most, the only way they could have been successful. But look at the retake from our races. they're coming in like, I don't even know what. Dead Fox had to get away with that, and the, the trait, the tracking, that was quite like tracking that. You have to respect that. He, get the, he got the headshot somehow. <laughs> That's well, I don't that know tracking going on. was ridiculous, as a guy jumps Past a box. What an effort from Hellraisers, but it wasn't enough. Cloud9 take it to overtime. I thought they were done for. I thought they were a ham hanging on a hook being smoked by a butcher. But no, here they are. The, the crazy thing is that, you, you know, it, it can look really bad for Hellraisers. You can say, oh, you know, why didn't they have anyone, you know, able to spot for that? Because Hellraisers knew the buy would suck for Cloud9. They, the, Hellraisers took a, a, a gamble insofar as, okay, there's, there's this one weakness, there's this one chink in the armor. But, but, you know, we, we're just gambling that they don't go for that. And uh, they were unfortunate. Cloud9 just had the right read. And they found that, that hole. And those TZs, man, they, they hit you fast. 26 overtimes and counting. <laughs> Is it really 26 26. Now? My God. They made an overlay for it. It's that many. They made an overlay. That's awesome. It should be an overlay. Foxic likes balloons. Skadoodle won't get popped. Down to 21 HP. And it's a fast, long play from Cloud9, but what will they do afterwards? Is this a charge to the site, expecting a different um, approach, perhaps, from Hellraisers? Of course, the CTs have to change their configuration. You can't just play the same. Angel smoked off before he can see anything. So he will have no idea. Maybe, worst case, he'll expect two players behind the smoke, but it might just be four. Flash is coming in. Looking to go for the burst through. Bondic. Strong start there. It doesn't seem to be much doing through this choke point. It is absolute death and destruction here for Cloud9. It's such a struggle, but Automatic is looking to make that struggle somewhat better as he does do some damage, create some distraction. Wow. That is fantastic. Picks up another one. That's a 3v3, but the bomb is on the site, James, and it's smoked off. They have 45 seconds. They've got two flashes. They have a smoke if it's of any use, and uh, that's not going to help either. They can flash to that position. So as you can see, they're trying to isolate some of the CT players, either force them back or force them to be in vulnerable positions. But the CTs have the superior angles. These flashes have got to come in. You can see all the jiggle peeking from both sides, looking for the raw entries of the AK-47. But Golden is in a dissipating smoke, and that does not favor him. Automatic on the site now, 20 seconds. Could deal with the AWP again. How does he trade for his teammate? It's really awkward, but the transfer is ridiculous. Now it's time to get the bomb down. They know where Dead Fox is. Oh my god, the frag's from automatic in this one round. Looking for an ace, is he? But first, he's got to plant the bomb. Dead Fox going wide, and they're not committing to it. They've got a frag. He's just hiding now. Three seconds. He's charging. He's got two HP. He has a frag automatic. What a ridiculous. Oh, no, he hasn't. The time ran out. <laughs> what the hell is that? Automatic. Oh my god. That is the most bittersweet ace you could ever ask for. Oh, man. What a desperate position Cloud9 were in. I can't believe that. Automatic find found a way to actually just punch his way through this situation, but then... Oh... This even says one on the clock still. That is just cheeky. Bittersweet for Automatic. But that's got to pump Cloud9 up, though, in, in one way. They were in a horrible spot. They shouldn't have been able to win the round. They almost found a way to do it. Man, they are scrapping. 
with the best of them right now. Very scrappy game at this point. And Cloud9 probably don't feel as though they can go to some of those B rounds as much. They were really hammering them at the last end of that T half. And my god, they're going towards A and they're getting wrecked. Losing two players at the start of the round. Golden is forced to make a really fast play towards the A site now. He's absolutely forced to do this, especially seeing the setup on the long position. He will not expect a player on the site, surely. Third player, there he is, Bondic. Good timing. And now, what are you left with? Worst case, it's got to be a two versus two on the B bomb site. Just go for it. Got to go for it. Got to get these kills. There's the first one, but his instant trade leaves Kadoodle alone. And in many of these uh, rounds, he has been in the late game in an awkward position for his team where it's just it's just hard to, to get those uh, trade situations in with the AWP, especially when you're outnumbered. And that is um, a second round. That's two for, for two from Hellraisers. Automatic doesn't deserve that, man. He's like the nicest guy. <laughs> yeah, He's the kind of yeah. guy who walk up to you and be like, I appreciate you. <laughs> I think he literally said that to me once. He just walked up to me and said, James, I appreciate you. I'm like, thanks, man. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> so, ooh. Oh, I, I, just, I can barely believe this game at this point. I feel like Cloud9 is just in it, but then if you look at the scoreboard, it's like, oh, it's the Hellraiser two rounds ahead. We'll see a Suez take coming in from at Cloud9. By no means does it mean that they will end up going for that B play. Can threaten it. They... There's a lot of reason here that Horizons have to fear the B plays. Issa, though, on the AWP. Wow, Crush goes in for one. Issa with the orb. You don't really expect him to have it at this point. And he will be taken down very quickly. Automatic back on one, but it's up to Bonding. Said he wasn't having the best time of it, but he is having a fantastic oh round. My Absolutely days. phenomenal there from Bondic to end things on the first half. Three rounds for Hellraisers, some of them by the slimmest of margins, but they make it happen. And now they are positioned incredibly well in the second half of this overtime. Holy potatoes. Bondic, what on earth are you doing? He sees the tracers. Easy punish for him. He's all over the place today. He's ready. He's ready for the ting. He is ready. Stiko's cooled down. He was on 28 frags for the longest time, and now he's on 32. So, um, But his other teammates have been catching up to him. But now they have a lot to do. Hellraisers with three match points as they move into the T side. Again, um, it has been T dominant as well for the most part, this game of overpass. So this is not a good look for Cloud9 in normal time. They only got five rounds on their CT side. So... We're asking a lot, but um, well, now we have the money to start to start off with. Automatic will be on the AWP as well. Sean Grills has made some videos about um, automatic hopping on in, on the overpass. Look them up. Sean Gaz. <laughs> For those of you that have no idea what James is talking about. Sean Grills, man. Um, I don't know who Sean Gaz is. Hellraisers, they are really in a great position, of course. And you can see they were really pumped up there. They can feel it. They know they just have to hang in there for just a, just a bit longer. Bondic really stepping up in a massive way in that last round. That was an incredible highlight. And that might be one of the... I mean, there's been quite a few highlights from this match so far, but that might be one of the most key ones. So Hellraisers, you know, they look to open things up with the default, see the cloud line playing really passive, and then they're like, you know what? They're playing so passively, they won't, they'll, they'll feel the pressure, but they won't notice that we're going back because they're too far away. So we can go for a fast burst onto the B site, automatic with the AWP. Can he find a shot? He is blind as hell, but he'll still get the shot. And then when he is got his vision back, he's going to do some damage. Two players there for Hellraisers to try to make good of this, but they cannot trade to success. The B push has failed, and Cloud9 stay in this one. 27 seconds for Woxic. Now, if they've identified that uh, the CTs have bought two AWPs in this round, then there's a big argument for damage. That's a great shot from him. Can he get a second one out of it? I can't believe he's still alive. They're still peeking him. But there will be no more damage for Cloud9. So there's definitely something to fight for. That a second AWP picked up at the end is very crucial for Cloud9. That was an all-in buy for them. They can't afford to lose a round, so they've got nothing to lose by going for those two AWPs. But lose too much money and your other buys are weaker. And that could make the difference. Two more rounds for Cloud9 to pull back. 
five AKs coming out for the Hellraiser squad. And if Hellraisers don't plant the bomb in this round and lose it, they may be in a similar boat where they won't have a lot to fight with. But we've seen matches won with less. Sounds like a crappy boat, James. Oh, very fast round coming in from Hellraisers. They want to finish this with a bang. Rush and Automatic, though, holding their positions, but maybe not for too long. Dead Fox Bondic striking back, taking control of the bomb site here as we go three versus two in favor of Hellraisers. Skadula is fast in the flank with the AWP. Can he open things up here? He doesn't have any pressure coming in from CT Spawn. His teammate will play from Monster. This will be tough. Oh, they're going to rotate to the A bomb site. And obviously, Cloud9 will be very surprised if they go for a fast push in. Although, Sneaker is going to do exactly that. And Skadoodle's rotating towards Connector. Of course, the T's will get there first. He has to slow down because he doesn't know if there's a Lurker in this position. But um, can he get angles before they move towards Long, for example? Sneaker will join him. Now, can Skadoodle get an angle on the site? That's so important, as you can see, he does. Now, they may just have to gamble and say, there's probably no one long. In fact, Stiko has gone to check, so they've got a crossfire moving into the sites. What a smart play from Hellraisers. They understood which players were left, knew they were B players, rotating players, and gambled on that CT area being very safe and clear. And it's an important incendiary. I think he wanted it to go much deeper, Stiko, into the bank position. And that bomb is exposed here. They're going to go all the way deep into the bomb site. Skadoodle gets himself one, but he's alone. And Hellraisers make it happen. They will take it in overtime. What a grind.